God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our service of morning prayer right to can be found on our website at coascension.org. That is C as in church, O as in of, ascension.org. Or you can use your prayer book beginning on page 80. Lord, open our lips. And, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Pascha Nostrum is found on page 83 of the Book of Common Prayer, or follows in your bulletin. Let us say it together. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The psalm is Psalm 116. We will read responsibly by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt ge generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. In that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. 
Canticle 8 is found on page 85 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. You're invited to say it together with us. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and his rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretch forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not a perishable but imperishable seed, through the living and enduring Word of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 21 is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 95 or in your bulletin. We would invite you to say it with us. You are God. We, we praise, praise you. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, Worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. 
You are seated at right, God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death. And crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while we were, he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. speak to you today in the name of the risen Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but the road to Emmaus feels a lot longer this year. Looking back over the last six weeks of social distancing and quarantine, I did not have a true appreciation for what it would mean to stay at home and close down all non-essential businesses. Sure, it's produced some great memes, and parents now have a new appreciation for their children's teachers, but did we really understand what we were getting ourselves into? We all got an extended spring break, 
But now that Easter has come and gone and we are breathing down the neck of May of what should be the end of the school year, we're starting to get a little antsy. There are groups pressuring governors to reopen non-essential businesses. There's Georgia, which has declared everything reopened, though her citizens are exercising extreme caution and re-engaging right now. Places like Harris County, Texas, which have mandated face coverings, including homemade face masks and bananas, though I think it meant bandanas in that one television station report, obviously a need for double checking of spelling. We're starting to get a little silly and a little bored. We've binge watched everything good and, not, and some not so good Netflix. Now we're trying to figure out how to subscribe to BBC in order to watch Vicar of Diddley reruns. Hang in there. We're doing better than most in the country. New Orleans, Chicago, New York are experiencing a healthcare crisis beyond anything we might imagine here in Alabama. Though some of you are all too familiar with the experience of being in the hospital or having a family member in the hospital without any visitors, or someone to help or advocate for you. Resurrection and renewal can be hidden from us, even when it journeys down the road right next to us. While they were walking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Take a minute to think about what has just happened. Jesus died on a cross in a public execution. Then somehow his body was not to be found in the tomb in which they had rolled a big stone over, and some women, who they had no reason to not believe, said they had seen Jesus walking around and talking to them. This is not only breaking news, but headlines on TMZ. Now two disciples are walking down the road and some guy walks with them who is apparently the only one in Jerusalem that doesn't know what's been happening lately. It's the modern day equivalent of someone who hasn't heard of COVID-19 and doesn't know why we're all at home. So these two disciples begin to fill the stranger in on all the news. In the midst of talking about all the things that had happened in the last few weeks and all the things this Jesus of Nazareth has done, they slip in their hopes and dreams. We had hoped he would be the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped. How often are our hopes and expectations unfulfilled to the point that they distract us from a truth that is even better than what we might desire. I think that is a little like what we are experiencing in the here and now. For most of us, our lives have been pretty blessed. We have good jobs, loving families, our needs are met as are most of our wants. Our hopes and expectations are grounded in the belief that things will continue going pretty good for us. At least that was our hopes and expectations until the middle of March, when everything changed. But now, what we had hoped for doesn't even seem possible anymore. The truth of our existence seems as surreal as the belief that one man could change the whole world. And yet that is exactly what happened. Crucifixions. Pandemics, they distract us from the truth of the world. We get so caught up in the present circumstances, we miss the truth standing right next to us, God in the midst of us, right here, right now, just as God was in the midst of the suffering and confusion that two disciples harbored on a road to Emmaus so very long ago. It's easy for us to get so caught up in the anxiety of the moment that we forget the long game, the light that shines in the darkness that the darkness cannot and will not overcome. When we are lost in the unknowing and angst of what it means to live in the darkness of this pandemic, 
That is the time to be on the lookout for Jesus. As the two disciples on the road bemoaned their current circumstances, Jesus began to contextualize their particulars within the promises of Scripture by opening to them the Scriptures beginning with Moses and the prophets. Then he broke the bread and was made known to them. Often when we hear this story, we associate it with the Eucharist we celebrate in church on Sundays, or at least the Eucharist we used to celebrate in church on Sundays. But when the familiar places that we find Jesus, like church, like in the Eucharist, are no longer available to us, then we find that Jesus is made known to us in unexpected places. In the first weeks of the pandemic and our social distance practices and newfound televangelist capabilities, we began to ask the question regarding how things might be different in how we witness to Jesus Christ after this pandemic was over. In more recent weeks, I have begun to notice connections being made regarding our current circumstances and a monastic experience, a time for deep, personal prayer and reflection. I don't know how things might change when we get to come back together again, but I do know that in the midst of suffering, we are always drawn into a deeper relationship with Christ. Our challenge is not to get lost in all the distractions surrounding life in the midst of a pandemic, but instead to search for Jesus in the midst of our brokenness. If you are having trouble finding Jesus, I might recommend taking the time to read the Bible. The two disciples recognized that their hearts were burning within us while he was opening the scriptures to us. I found a lot of hope in scripture lately, including all those Old Testament stories about famine, pestilence, and most especially plague. It's easy to read those stories and get lost in the suffering. But the thing I have been more drawn to recently is how God is in the midst of those times of hardship and doubt and how the people hold on to their hope in God and the promise that things will get better. And they always do. We are in the midst of a dark time. It will get better. And if you're feeling lost and abandoned, or even bored and frustrated, start looking for Jesus. He is in the midst of our brokenness. Even now, 2,000 years after that walk along the road to Emmaus. And thanks be to God for that. The Apostles' Creed is found in your Book of Common Prayer on page 96 or in your bulletin. Let us profess our faith as one voice. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He was ascended into heaven. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning and welcome. We are delighted that you are here worshiping with us this day in all the various ways, YouTube, Facebook, or even on our website. Thank you for being with us today to praise and worship our Lord and Savior together. There are just a few announcements I'd like to draw your attention to. 
If you have taken the bulletin from our website, www.coascension.org, you might have noticed on the very last page, we have several announcements. I would call your attention most especially to our Easter in the time of quarantine. That is a service of Easter lessons and carols that we have put together as a way to pray and be in a hopeful spirit in this time of pandemic. That service will air or will stream on Facebook, YouTube, and our website Thursday night, April 30th at 7 p.m. And I hope you might join us for that beautiful liturgy. A couple of other announcements. Our virtual coffee hour always begins at 10.30 a.m. on Sundays after church. You can get a link to that through the email that was sent to you either this morning or Friday's email. Yesterday, we delivered or handed out, distributed 40 food boxes for people who had reserved this month for a food box. Typically, we do that ministry on Wednesdays and we distribute them from our parish office. But due to the pandemic, we had to make some changes. So we had volunteers here this past week packing food boxes in the Joshua House. And then yesterday, they were handing them out to people who had called ahead and reserved for those food boxes. We will continue to participate in that ministry on the fourth Saturday of every month during this time. If you would like to help out with that in some, some way, please feel free to contact the office and we'll get you in touch with the right person to do so. Thanks to all the volunteers who helped do that yesterday. What a difference and a joy and a transformational part of the life of Montgomery you are. I would also remind you that our forward day-by-days are here at the church. If you would like a forward day-by-day, -day, which is a devotional book that accompanies the daily office readings, we are glad to mail those to you. So just give us a call in the church office and we will make sure we pop one in the mail to you this week. Finally, I would remind you that during our offertory anthem, you are welcome to go online at coascension, coascension.org and give you can just click on the give now button you can also text to give by dialing 833-901-2138 that should be in the box on the screen with me 833-901-2138 when you do give during that time you will be given the opportunity also to assume the fee we um, are happy for you to do that but you do not have to do that that is at your own choice we appreciate all the gifts that you have continued to give. Um, it is a delight every week to see how many of you are mailing your pledges in or extra gifts in to the office. How many of you have been going online and giving or texting and giving. Those offertories are still part of what we believe about God, especially in times of suffering and doubt and darkness and worry. We often have a tendency to want to limit our giving. We, we, we get stuck in a place of scarcity. But what I have seen through all of you is a theology of abundance, a desire to give back to the Lord from what he has given you. And that is a beautiful and joyous thing that we are celebrating together. So thank you for those gifts, for those future gifts. It's the way that you and I get to partner together with God to continue to do God's work in this world. Let's do an offertory sentence. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
the envelopes and cards and our offertory plate are symbolic of those gifts that you have given us this past week. All things come of thee, O Lord. And now I know that we are of thee. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who Lord, art in Lord. heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B continue in the prayer book on page 98, or in your bulletin. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope to fail. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen.
Prayers of the People are Form 3, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Kneeling as you are able. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We, we pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Key, our bishop, Glenda, our bishop-elect, and Candace and John, our clergy and Drew, and all other bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our president, Kay, our governor, Stephen, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for Phil Marquette, Tim Lewis, Sue Hicks, Pam Gay, Mrs. Glenn Silvest, Violet Monson, Edith Crook, Helen Brooks, Al Cantrell, Bill Wall, Helen Trawick, mother of Pat Rutland, Mary Koval, Francis Hill, Henrietta and Charles Hubbard, Bruce Cathy, Andrea Cathy. Have compassion on those who suffer from for any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died, especially those in whose memory the altar flowers are given. Douglas Carroll Hunt. Give to the departed eternal rest. That a light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the safety of our armed forces, both here and abroad, especially Callaway Jones. We give thanks for Ascension Day School and for all those affected by the COVID-19 virus, those who have been exposed, those who are infected, those who have died, and all healthcare workers and first responders, especially Becky Grove, Chris Morfart, Devin and Samantha Adams, Joe Stubbs, Laura and Clifton Fay, Jill and Lucas. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The general thanksgiving is found in your prayer book on page 101 or in your bulletin. Let us say it with one voice. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Y'all come back now, you hear? 